Hey guys, welcome to the Match Play Podcast this week. It's great to be back with you guys. I know we've been on a little bit of a hiatus doing some you know, tournament stuff and then some live stuff in there, but we're happy to be back. Today we've got a video of myself on, on, on the driving range. I've been going through a little bit of swing issues, some contact issues, and uh, we're just going to kind of talk about it and see where we end up. Yeah, so I mean, the thing, I think the most important thing that we should talk about is what Bill is doing right now before the video has even started. This is something that everyone should do. Go into practice with a purpose. He's got a station here set up with that alignment stick between his feet and that alignment stick that's pointed towards target down the line. Um, that's a little, it's between his feet and uh, the ball. So what's super important about this is that alignment stick in his, between his feet, that's giving him an indication of where a consistent ball position is. That's like we talked about creating a consistent thing in golf which is the most important thing we can do the more consistent we can we can create the better we can repeat it on the golf course so this station is fantastic for taking the range practice onto the course <laughs> additionally um, as you'll see in this video bill goes behind his ball picks his spot in front two inches in front of the ball and then really just focuses on that spot the station allows him again to focus on what's in front of him not looking up at the target which could potentially bring in opening of the shoulders or opening of the body and second guessing his actual alignment. So by taking this pre-practice on the driving range, his pre-shot routine and his actual swing routine and making it so solid and repeatable here, he can better transfer his game to the golf course, which should lead to better scores, less second guessing and more confidence. So let's take a look at it, Bill, and uh, let's talk a little bit more about what we see. So for me, Jeff, and if we roll that back just a little bit, mm -hmm. that is, I mean, this ball ended up online. It curved a ton, but that is, that is starting offline, you know, and that's the biggest issue I've been having is alongside with uh, facial strike issues, you know, being here, setting up, making sure my alignment's good. And frankly, it feels pretty comfortable. But yeah. what could be leading to that dead push? I mean, because this ball is turning 12 feet in the air on an 8-iron. Or 12 yards in the air. I mean, it's a lot. Um, yeah. So. Um, I, w I mean, knowing that there's some uh, age factors into the swing right now definitely. would be one thing that I would definitely throw as a big factor up there. Obviously, the viewers don't know that, but Bill has been uh, having a little bit of a a flare up with an injury, a previous injury. Um, and that is present in this swing. It's why he kind of isn't able to rotate as well as he has in the past. Um, so that's one thing that could be leading to you. Your path being a little more inside to out, which is that initial um, factor that determines start line uh, mm -hmm. on top of obviously where the face is pointed. <clears throat> but clearly you're getting the face back to um, target and square to target because it's drawing back onto your target line. Your path is just so inside to out because you can't turn and get the sync of body rotation and hand path exactly. um, in there. And just, just for the viewers, you know, obviously this is one of the first videos you're seeing clearly of me on this channel, but you know, for a lot of years I played a, you know, one to two negative path fade, um, which was a right. little like butter cut and getting older, you know, my body's not able to get into those positions that I'm, you know, so used to through my twenties. So now there's some, basically the, I'm looking at the other side of the golf course. Um, very, very few started left fades, more started right draws. And I think just to, you know, Jeff's point there, you know, my body isn't moving as well as it used to. So my path is dipping a little bit farther inside out, which is, you know, a pretty big change Totally. For me. It, yeah, and it's the normal kind of progression of uh, golfers as they age. They tend yeah. to have difficulty either turning back enough to actually create a proper turn and allow them to get into a better uh, position at the top of the swing, which then allows them to rotate and get into the right position at impact. Um, in this case, because you're having difficulty rotating back and through, you can even see in your first alignment you might be a hair shut 
with your stance, which is just allowing you to get a little bit more of that backswing rotation. Exactly. Um, and I started doing that when I started to, you know, not quite feel as good as I'd always had been. So I set that mm -hmm. foot back, you know, years of being in the industry, you know, it's like, okay, I know how to make this turn bigger artificially. So I'm going to try to do it. And I was playing all right, but that's, uh, when I'm starting to get like over exaggerated and started getting like deeper and deeper and deeper, then like my visuals change and I'm thinking stuff is too far right. It's too far left. And just the comfort level of stepping up into the golf ball is really the issue, which is why, you know, it's a great tool for everyday range practice, but this is a very, very good, you know, starting point kind of station to Jeff's point, you know, ball, ball position and, um, uh, and target line to make sure that you know all your railroad ties are in check before you even get going absolutely alignment is one of the foundations of the golf swing if your alignment's off and you're trying to do other things in your swing what are you doing you're you're going to be causing more errors than you're going to be fixing yeah, exactly you're going to start making yourself do all sorts of different compensations to get the ball flight you want but a lot of what it's coming down to is probably the fact that your body line and um hand line, shoulder line, hip line, foot line is all mixed up. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a great thing to just check yourself before you play around and also to gain the feel for your round that day to know this, according to my station, is what straight feels like today. Yep. So this is what I need to feel on the golf course. And if I feel something different, that's when I know I'm not lined up. So I, you just have to kind of be really in tune with this station. And like Bill just said, it's a fantastic station to use every day. Um, because it truly does bring consistency, it allows you to a obtain a feel and learn what your body feels like in that day, which is super important. Mm -hmm. Our bodies change day to day. So this station is fantastic for getting better at knowing what today is supposed to feel like, and then take that to the golf course. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, like I said earlier, Bill didn't look at the target before he took the swing. He literally well, in this position or in this video, he was actually standing over the golf ball. You didn't see him walk into it. But he didn't look at the target before he took the swing. He just was looking at his spot two inches in front of the ball, which is exactly what you can do on the course, like I said earlier. So let's roll this through. Um, we'll get into the, the next swing here, which frankly was a little bit better swing, tighter ball flight, better contact. Um, and you can kind of see the processing. Of... And pa pause it right there real quick. Sure. So um, this is a great education point for golfers that are either amateur um, and trying to get to that next step or just learning the game. Um, Bill obviously noted here, um, based off his feel, that he missed it off the toe, which as you play golf more and more, you'll learn what it feels like to hit off the toe or hit off the sweet spot, hit it off the heel, hit it high, hit it low, hit it fat, hit it thin. That is information that you should really think about because it does give you a lot of information about what you did in that swing. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do to make a better strike or a better swing that produces a better strike or a more repeatable swing that produces that better strike more consistently. And that's what Bill was trying to note here. Is it's like, it was a decent strike, slightly toe, because he knows to himself that he can do better and he knows that in this next swing, there's something he needs to change to get that pure strike or better strike yeah. starts on a better line. Exactly, so just just play. finding center, you know, and having that yep. wherewithal of what what the feels of your golf clubs are, you know, in the slightest difference. And it's not a big noticeable difference between, you know, slight toe, slight heel. You know, they're going to both feel pretty good. A lot of it's, you know, the sound of it itself, the mm -hmm. actual vibration of it that'll roll into your hands. They're similar, but they're just ever so slightly different. And it just takes years of understanding. And frankly, you know, not changing, you know, iron sets and wedges, you know, every three months helps. Um, you get, a, you get accustomed to your actual equipment and can play it for, you know, years to come as long as it still performs. Yeah. For you. Um, but let's get this thing rolling through. Okay. Yeah. We're just sitting behind the golf ball here, kind of making sure it's in the appropriate spot, thinking about my spot in front of me here. Um, and then making sure I, even though it's not a long walk up, I walk in as I was walking into a golf shot to where everything's set, everything's aligned. Now, this is a bad problem I have for myself. Mm -hmm. Let me come back in.
And for me there on that swing, being inside to out, uh, I just wanted to feel a little taller to help neutralize that path a little bit. And that made the world a difference in terms of, you know, one, the ball flight, a little bit tighter, and two, the centerness of contact. So one of my main flaws is I get a little too stumped over, you know, and then we start to drag that thing inside to out with the, you know, the way my body feels, it's already being more inside to out. So then we just exacerbate an issue that frankly never used to be there and is a little bit concerning to me. But we're still hitting a solid, so, you know, tough cookies, you know? Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, a, a thing to think about based off the video and what I'm looking at right now is your feet are obviously slightly shut to the camera. The camera is not perfectly down the line. It isn't. For, no. you, for, your hand, for your hand path. It's down the line closer to the ball line, which is fine. It's why we're seeing that kind of skew of um, these lines. But... If you look at his foot line compared to that line pointed at the target, in theory, they are perfectly parallel to each other. That's railroad tracks. And, and, and that's, that's what those, it is. I know it looks a little different here, but they are square. Yeah, and I, I can I understand based off where the camera's at that that is the case. Um, but for the viewers, that's something that's really important. Uh, you might feel like you're really open to the target, but if you throw an alignment stick down, you'll find your feet are square. <laughs> that's totally normal. Yeah. Parallel lines at your feet are in the distance going to look tighter. If you ever have stood in the middle of a railroad track and looked into the distance, they look like they almost touch in the distance. Mm -hmm. They're still parallel. They're still the same distance apart there. Uh, but that is what you're trying to achieve in your setup. If you're trying to zero out um, paths and stuff like that in order to do that, if your alignment in your feet and you're like where you're pointed <laughs> or pointing the club at a dress, like this, you're gonna start hitting some hooks or you're gonna start hitting some pull slices because you're trying to compensate to do that. Exactly, um, and it just comes down to, you know, what what one of those troublesome shots is happening it comes down to how your, how your pathing is, essentially, where your backswing is, whether or not you throw it over the top, dip it underneath like I'm doing here. You know, we all have issues. You know, myself, I'm a fairly decent player, um, but I was telling Jeff before we hopped on here, you know, the last nine I played, I lost eight balls in six holes and I was just like I had no idea where the ball was going so we have to go back to basics um you know we're not going to overhaul this swing not one bit so you know I'll, if you're struggling out there with just you know finding repeatability finding consistency a station like this and practicing with a purpose is definitely going to help you understand what the heck's going on to where you don't compound compound errors per se uh, or what is actually the inefficiency in the golf swing? Uh, thanks for tuning back into the Match Play podcast. Uh, we're hoping to get some more episodes rolling out con more consistently here soon. Um, so thanks for tuning in and uh, have a great one. See you guys next time.